459. The Birth of the King. Telseidon Report number 377. December 1996. Too often scholars tell us that the early church did not observe Christmas and knew nothing about it. When Christmas observances first occurred, we are told, it was supposedly a few centuries later. If this is true, why do we find that the Christmas observances were so well developed when we first meet them? Our first knowledge of Christmas celebrations tell us of a holy day of established practices and forms. We cannot understand Christmas unless we recognize it as what Scripture and so many hymns tell us about it. It celebrates the birthday of the King over all kings and the Lord over all lords. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 In antiquity, the king's birthday was the key holiday, and it was a necessary observance. To celebrate another king's birthday was treason, and hence Christians for generations could not openly observe the birthday of their king. We're very near a like condition. The day of resurrection is now turned into a pagan holiday, and Christmas is being similarly transformed. We have a generation which says, in effect, We have no king but Caesar. John chapter 19 verse 15 To celebrate the birthday of our king means to affirm that, in every area of life and thought, he is king and lord. The Christmas carols or hymns sing of his triumph and universal reign as the great prince of peace. The joy of Christmas is essentially the knowledge that he is king. The wise men had some awareness of the importance of our Lord's birth, for they came asking, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Matthew chapter 2 verse 2 Mary, in the Magnificat, rejoices that the great royal overturner was coming through her. Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55 The whole of history was to have a new direction and a new power. The newborn king was the last Adam, the Lord from heaven the head of a new human race, which would replace the fallen humanity of the first Adam. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 to 49. By his coming, the king gives a new direction to history, and the new destination is universal victory. We are in our present distress because people in the church have forgotten Christ the king, do not seek victory, and are content to let fallen men rule over them. Lacking the faith of our fathers, we are throwing away their victories. Instead of being king and priest unto God and his Father in Christ, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, we are television addicts, an average of four hours daily, who have little time for the Bible and prayer. We are losing by default. It is time for us to celebrate Christmas joyfully as a promise of victory, and then to apply his victory to our lives, our times, and our world.